Oh, man, this is really living. Hey, everybody, it's Friday, July 19th, and we are going to take a look at this American Treasure Tour Museum. There it is. There they are. I'm going to be performing as Nicodemus at the 3 o'clock show today. Right now it's 10.25, so we got some time. And my grandma and my mom are coming to see the show, so that's exciting. But let's go take a look at this stuff inside here first. Running out of room, but he never listens to us. He brings things in all the time, but when he brings them, we find a place to put them. But this is a mystery man. That was the condition when we started the tour. We don't tell anybody his name because he wants the collection to speak for itself, and I'm sure you'll agree it definitely does. Can't tell you his name, but my name is Kirsten. I'll be your tour guide, your tram driver, you're stuck with me for a little while, but I promise it'll be enjoyable. Just a couple of rules as we get started. Please just mystery owner is he started collecting with cars. And we're gonna see yes. plenty of them wow. on our tour today. Yes, 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 yes. You like cars? He does like cars. The first car on the right is a 1956 two-door hardtop convertible fender bird. And they made that car for three years, 1955, 56, and 57. And as a result, the Thunderbird competed with the Corvette. They sold many more Thunderbirds at this time than they did Corvettes. I will point out at least one Corvette as we go along, but our Thunderbird only has two seats. That might not be practical. If you need a family car, look no further than just past them on the right. And we have a 1958 Studebaker station wagon. The model is called the Stutzman. And if you bought that car new in 1958, it would cost you $1,776. That machine we just heard is called the Gorlitzer Model 153. And it's just the first of many band organs. We are going to be here on our tour today. We are entering a room full of them. We call this the band organ room. Floats in New Orleans about 10 years ago. And past the trucks, I promise you will not miss Gumby standing here. He's pretty big. Whoa. This has been verified as being the largest Gumby in the world. What? He stands almost 20 feet tall. And on the far wall of this room, you'll find three more of our band organs. The largest in the middle is a Relator Model 175. And this is the only 175 to work the company ever made. It lived with a carousel in Denver, Colorado before being put into storage for many years. And when we got our hands on this machine, it was in terrible shape. It took us almost a whole year to repair it, but it should play now. <laughs> if you're ever in this area, it's in Oaks, Pennsylvania, that you make the trip. It's really, really fun. Lots of crazy stuff. There's vehicles and collectibles and old signs and some Guinness Book of World Records stuff in terms of like the largest this or the largest that. So it's pretty awesome. And it's all owned by one anonymous private collector, which is really cool as well. It's his whole collection. He just has it on display. It's pretty fascinating. Hey, everybody. It's Tuesday, July 23rd. It is 9.48 a.m. I am about five minutes from work. I wanted to get you caught up. It's been a while. And, oh, it's dark. Let's see if I can put my phone in a different location. There we go. Let's do this. All right. Sorry. Turning. Can't see me. This way, it's safer. I'm not actually looking at the camera. Um, I'm looking at the road. Uh, so Sunday, my kids went to stay with my in-laws. And uh, we went uh, 
we celebrated our anniversary on Sunday and Monday because it is today and I have work. So it's our 14th wedding anniversary. Sorry, this is terrible production value. You just see me this way. Uh, you may notice I trimmed my beard down since the last time you saw me. There it is. Uh, a lot more gray, that's for sure, visible. Um, went to see the Adams Family at my local community theater. My friends are in it and got to support them. It was a fun show, it was very funny. Uh, went to see Spider-Man Far From Home with my wife. Um, went out to dinner, had a great time just relaxing. Did some thrift store hopping, thrift store, thrift store hopping over the last day or two. And uh, today I'll be going in for the second show as Nicodemus, I hope. Uh, I have uh, a friend of mine who played Evita or Ava Perone, the last time I did it at the Broadway Theater in Pittman, New Jersey. She's coming with her parents to come see the show, so I'm excited about that. I always like when people come see the show. Um, but yeah, that's what we got going on so far. My kids and my wife are supposed to be going to Dorney Park today. Um, it's a little overcast, so we'll see if they do that. Um, but that is where we stand for right now. It should catch you up on everything. Um, and now I gotta go. So, uh, I hope you have a great day, and I will be in touch with you later. Good morning, everybody. It's Saturday, July 27th. It's 9, 10 a.m., and I'm driving to work. Um, this morning, I got up early, took the family out for breakfast. It's my younger son's birthday, and, uh, we are getting a third cat. That's right. Um, we saw a cat at Pet Value, who was a rescue. He's a little under a year old. He's a black cat, like our cat that passed away in October. Similar uh, demeanor and stuff, so uh, we decided to pull the trigger. Um, just got too much love to give. Can't, two cats isn't enough in our house, apparently. Um, yeah, I'm excited because I love black cats. And uh, another thing that's interesting is today is four years to the day uh, that I auditioned for Sight and Sound the first time. Back in 2015, July 27th, um, and it's it's a good reminder that I get to do something that I really enjoy, especially in these uh, dog days of summer when we've done the show by now. I want to say over almost 200 times, over 200 times I think this year, and I did 130 performances last year. Um, so it's good to remember those things, especially with like the nerves of the outcome of Wee Nestor auditions looming and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's just a, a nice reminder to see that coming up in my memories today. So anybody out there watching this, uh, if there's something that you want to do, you got to go after it. You don't have to quit your job and do and put yourself in a hole, but you should at least. Uh, start to prioritize your life around the things that you care most about. If you're goofing around and you're playing video games or you're binge watching TV and you're complaining that your life isn't where you want it to be, then maybe it's time to re-prioritize. You're in control of your calendar. Um, for the most part, you know, you have a 9 to 5 job or whatever. You can find those extra hours that are important to do what's most important to you um, so you can start working towards something that you really enjoy I remember when I was working my cubicle job and I was heavily involved in the church plant that we were a part of at the time and I was and that's what motivated me was the time spent on those things because I was really passionate about it so even if you have a job that you don't enjoy find those times in the day to work on something that you're super passionate about and that'll help uh, and then it'll also equip you uh, and prepare you to start making hopefully the transition at some point into something that you like uh, to do for a living so that's my little motivational speech for you but uh, I hope you guys are doing well out there thank you so much for watching and listening and uh Always appreciate a uh, new subscriber, so go to youtube.actingrealtor.com, subscribe on YouTube, if you do uh, podcast.actingrealtor.com, you can 
subscribe on any podcast app. I'd appreciate it. Thanks.